Hi, my name's Kerry Badham and I'm really excited to show you today my brand new design that I've designed in collaboration with FMM Sugarcraft. It's an English rose inspired by David Austin. The set consists of three innovative designs. We've made this really simple for you by having all-in-one cutters and then five petals on a separate cutter on its own. The idea of this set is to make it very, very easy to make your rose and assemble it quickly, giving you the best possible effects you can have. The paste I recommend that you use is a mix of flower paste and modeling paste. I find that your paste remains softer for longer, it's easier to work with, but you can still get a really fine finish on your flower. Now the difference with this particular flower is that we start from the outside in. So we start with the largest cutter, and you can see that it's got the, the large outer petal with just a little nick in the top, which reflects a true David Austin rose. We put that to one side, non-stick mat, and your non-stick rolling pin, and then we roll it out. And you wanna get this nice and fine. Keep turning it as you go, otherwise it will stick on your mat. The paste is rolled out, turn it over, place your cutter on top and press all around. This ensures that you get a lovely clean edge. Move it around your mat, I like to do this. It ensures that I don't get any frayed edges and it shows that I've got a nice clean cut. Remove the edge and pop it through. Your outer shape is cut out and as you can see, you've got beautiful, sharp but smooth edges. The great thing about using the mix of flower paste and modeling paste is it is so easy to handle and you can move it around without damaging it. We're now going to place it on the firm foam former pad and we're going to use a ball tool. And we just sweep this across the edges. So half on your pad, half on the edge of the petal. And all we want to do here is make it finer. We don't want to make it frilly. So we go round and round. The edges have been softened, so now I'm going to place it in a former. Now I use these, that I pick up from the local grocery store or supermarket. They're nice and round to get the shape that you the uh, size that you need to pop it in, and I just place it inside. And the good thing with these is, you can see where there's slight dips. Now, petals do that. By nature, they don't grow symmetrically and perfectly. So don't worry if you've got one that slightly tips down. You need to repeat this process. You can do it three times or five times, depending on how large or deep you want your flower to be. It's entirely up to you. For my rose, I've decided that I would like five outer edge petals. And here they are, all in the former, drying while we make the inner section. The inner section of the paste is slightly darker. You can see here. Not too much of a change, but just a slight change. It helps you have an effect of depth on your flower. So we're going to use the inner section cutter this has got a nice ripple edge at the top. Place it on top. And we're going to cut out two pieces. Pop it through. I've cut out the two inner sections and now we're going to soften and smooth the edges on our firm foam former pad. Place that on your mat. Turn it over and use your ball tool, half on your petal and half on your foam mat. So again, we want to soften and smooth. We don't want to frill. If you apply too much pressure, you will cause your petal to frill. And you don't need to do this because we've got the lovely shape already cut out. Just like before, we're going to place them in a former. This one has got a slightly smaller circle 
as we have a slightly smaller inner. So we're just going to pop it inside. We've already smoothed the edges as demonstrated a moment ago. Pop them inside. And for this, you just need two. We're now halfway through the flower. So we've got the outer edges. You can do three or five. I've done five. And we've got the inner, which are two sections. So we're now going to make the center of the flower. So that's this section here which looks very complicated, but I promise you it's very, very easy. So this is the third stage of building your flower. As you can see, it's a little bit darker than our inner section, and then of course the outer section. This gives you depth on your flower, and that's how a flower actually grows, darker on the inside and becomes lighter as it gets towards the outside. So we're going to, again, Place this on top and we're going to apply pressure all the way around the petals. We've made this nice and easy for you by putting all five petals on one cutter. We're going to slide it around our board, making sure we've got a nice clean cut and then we can just pop them through. The petals are all out of the cutter now and we're going to place them on our firm foam former pad for softening and thinning. You can cut all your petals out, place them in a plastic wallet to keep them soft and then you can smooth them and make each section up all at once. I prefer to do this because I find it a lot quicker. Each section of the centre of the flower consists of five petals. So I've cut out three lots of five. You want a minimum of five lots of five or seven of five as I've done on my flower. But for the ease of the video, I'm going to show you this very quickly. So you take them off, turn them over, and then you ball tool the edges, making them nice and fine and delicate. And you do this for each petal. I'm just going to quickly show you this on one full section. It's going around nice and quickly, half on, half off. Don't want to frill it. Don't apply too much pressure, otherwise it will drag and you'll tear your petal. All the edges have been ball tooled. We're going to turn them back over. And I am going to put these together with just water, nothing else. So, at the inner. Place it on top. The inner, place it on top. Now we're going to pop this in the center of the petal. You can see the edge all the way around in the center. And the last one, like this. And the last bit is put a tiny piece of water there. Fold it over and pinch. You want to repeat this a minimum of five times or seven times if you want your flower to look fuller. Now this is where the magic happens. I've shown you how to make one, I've prepared three, but I did mention that you need five or seven for your inner centre of the flower. So we're now going to place them inside the flower and make our very beautiful frilled centre. So just some water here, it's nice and simple. Make sure that sits in the middle. As you can see, it's slightly darker. And then I'm going to use a cell pin. And what we're going to do is we're going to ruffle these, just bring them forward, gently ease them side to side because the center of a David Austin rose just looks like it's packed with beautiful petals and then you place one next to it exactly the same process and you keep building it up bring them over from side to side and the finer your petals are 
rolled and on the edges, the finer the centre of your flower looks. So just pop the third one in, as you can see. Nice and simple. This is such a quick way of making a David Austin inspired English rose. All in one cutter, making the centres very, very quickly and placing them in the centre. We've made our centre and it sits inside our inner layer. This was the first of the two that we previously cut out. And as you can see, they've had a little time to dry, so they've got their shape. They're not completely dry. We're still able to manipulate the, the petals to sit where we want. If they're completely dry, they go quite brittle and they can easily break. Here's our outer layers, and as you can see, they've got a lovely shape too, but you can still move them. And you can have three or five. I've done five for the purpose of the video. So now I'm going to share with you a little technique that I like to use, especially if we're using an all-in-one cutter. So we can, you can either do this with small pieces of paste or you can just use a cutter, which is what I've done. I've cut out a small, small section, keeps everything the same size and nice and neat. So what I would do is roll out my paste and this is using the Essential Shapes tapper. Place it on top and I will cut out some circles. One to sit between each of the layers. I'm going to show you how to assemble the flower to achieve this very beautiful David Austin inspired rose. So I'm going to place one of these in the centre and this gives us a little bit of depth between the petals just so they don't sit completely flat on top of each other. So I'm going to place that on and we need to make sure, see that's the first layer, so we need to make sure that this petal is going to sit between the petals. And that's the first, the first layer on. So you want to you place it in here while we do the next. So nice and quickly, get up, place it on top, remembering to go between the petals again. Okay, so as I said, you can have three or you can have five layers. So the next one between the petals here and just keep going as you can see on our flower this looks a little bit darker in the center and we've got the stamens so I'm now going to show you how to make your flower look even more real than it already does this, I would say, is the only technical part to making this David Austin rose. So, when creating the David Austin rose, the, the cutter for it, I decided that I wanted it to look like it was in full bloom. So, I would say that this is at about day five of the flower as it opens up, because the David Austin rose starts quite closed in. And as each day progresses, the flower opens and the petals start to fall away at the back. And this is where you get to see this beautiful effect in the center. But in the center of the David Austin rose, it also has some stamens. And these sections will be just slightly darker. So I'm going to show you how we do that by using some paper stamens, some powder for dusting, I've got some tape to secure them together. I have a yellow edible pen. Not that you're going to eat the paper stamens anyway. And these are just some scissors to trim it and a flat brush to apply the dust. 
The final part of the rose is now making the stamens. So I've kept this really simple, paper stamens. It's a yellow edible pen, nice and easy. And I literally just color them in. No messing around with powders and glues and backwards and forwards between pots and standing them on the side. Just keep it simple. Also, you don't run the risk of the powder dropping off and landing all over the centre of your flower. To enhance the centre of our inspired David Austin rose, we're going to just dust the petals. This creates depth and texture. So you just use a flat brush, an edible dust, and I like to dab it off in the lid or you can do it on the Hansen paper towel, it's up to you. And there's nothing technical in this, you just need to make sure that the petals have a nice dry edge on the top. If you want to add some on the edge of the outside, you can. It's your flower, so it's entirely up to you. We have all seven of our stamens coloured. I'm going to take my florist tape, you stretch it to make it the glue activate. I'm just going to place this round the wires. So nice and simple, hold it together, give them a tweak with your fingers, and then I'm going to We're just going to attach this to the center. So I'm just going to pop in some, a little bit of paste. And you can also pop some around the stem. Keeps it all the same color. I've used the white tape, so you can't really see it anyway, but it's just that extra little finishing touch. Side, some water to stay, and then just spread the stamen out. And then what I would do is I would leave this to dry in the former. So here's our cake that I made to demonstrate. As you can see, we've used a rose leaf cutter. This is actually the FMM one. And they look lovely placed on the cake. We've also used the drip, which is very on trend at the moment. This is a, another product developed by FMM, which I will be demonstrating in a separate video, which you can search on our channel. Um, and here is the, the David Austin Rose attached to the cake. I've attached it with royal icing. You can put in a cocktail stick in the back and of the flower and place it into the cake. You'd need to do that very carefully. But if you attach royal icing and hold your flower there until it's set, it does dry very, very hard and it is very secure. So you can see moving down the cake, you have the third one at the bottom. Again, demonstrating it with the leaves around it and the drip coming around the side. 